speaking of artwork, I, I gotta say this. The the artwork for Toxic, yo, that is dope. That's one thing I wanted to say. When I first saw it, I was like, yo, what is this? Who yeah. um did you design the artwork? Did you just have like a graphics guy do it? What was the process behind the artwork? All right, well, here's how here's how this one. I have um there are two partners that I um that I go to. Um shout out to uh shout out to BRG graphics and shout out to Flip Wilson graphics. Mm -hmm. Um I was going to BRG, he actually made the cover for Soul Food and Eye Candy. Now he's part like he's been overloaded working with um working on projects for like Black Youngster and Yo Gotti, you know that stuff. So I was like, okay, mm -hmm. cool. I know I know he had a packed schedule. He said, yo, you go to my partner. I said, okay, cool. And I said, I said, Flip, hey, listen, I got a, I got a record called Toxic. I'm gonna need some cover art for, it, right? And he said, okay, well, let me hear the record. So I let him hear the record. We were going over it. He said, I actually have something that will, that'll fit this. You know what I mean? And he asked for a little bit of, he asked for a little bit of a backstory on me. Prime example, I was in, I was in the army. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I was 744 military police battalion, and I was a seaburn specialist. So. I did like a lot of chemical stuff. So I always like, I ran the gas chamber at one point. I had mm. gas masks, I, like I did all of that stuff, mop four gear, you know, the works. So it actually worked out with Toxic being what it is. You say, hey, how do you feel about this? Not for now, I'm trying to see, I'm, I might be making that cover NFT. We'll Come see, on. we'll see. I'm still learning, I'm still learning the ropes on that. I might, sure, I might yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> The, the cover actually just happened to work out because once I saw it, I, like it really spoke to me. He said, how do you feel about this? And I was like, you know what? This not only gave me an idea for the song itself, because I'm last minute tweaks, obviously, but it gave me an idea for the video, which is coming up. So y'all gonna see that too. <laughs> yeah, that, that art, that, that's just 2022 in a picture to me. Mm -hmm. Just something about that. And I saw that, I was like, listen, I know this song is gonna be fire. Yo, uh, sh shout out to that whole creative direction. How long did it take you to write Toxic? Do you have a process where, like, you know, cause some people are like, yo, I go in there one take. And then some people are like, it took me three months. What was your process of writing the record? And how long did it take? Um, I purchased the beat. I purchased the beat from Rock Legion. I heard it and it took me I think I played the song maybe twice and I had the hook for it. Mm. Now I had, no, I had the hook for it. I was like, oh, okay, this, this is real easy. But the actual verses for Toxic, I came up with the first part of the first verse on the way to the studio. And then the second verse, I was like, all right, now nah, I got this. And I just, I just went for it. I went, so I didn't write the second verse. <laughs> and I wrote half the first verse, but it was all in the studio. Oh, okay. Is that your normal process when coming up with a record, or is it just it just happens a variety of different ways? Um, with my growth as an artist, I used to actually sit down for hours at a time because, again, remember I told you I was trying to emulate puns. So when I first started like rapping, I was just stacking rhymes, trying to weave in and out of patterns, and, like stack syllables, just just to get you know just to get on pace. So it would take me quite a bit of time to actually write these things down. But what I've realized is if I go into the studio with just a hook, sometimes where you actually, you'll have an idea for a song that you may want to write. But when you get in a studio and you hear it over the speakers, you can catch a completely different vibe in the studio. Mm. And the whole song can shift. It's had That's happened to me multiple times. Shout out to my boy Mac Major because he's the one that actually put me on. He was like, focus on your hooks because once you have your hooks now, he said your verses could change at any given point. So, yeah. up? shout out to all our aspiring artists out there. Yo, good advice. All right, let me introduce you to my man Sha Montana. Uh, Represent. Uh, uh. I know he got some questions for you. Sha, what up? Absolutely. So, I want to start off by. Uh... Welcoming you to the show. So some of us were independent artists at one point. So, you know, we definitely respect the artist that, you know, comes out, especially from Jersey. Yeah. Um, nah, I appreciate the love. Matter of fact, Rawway, Ready. Raw, Rawway's right there. Like, I, like I'm like i from North, but I live in Elizabeth. Okay, okay. Um, 
the you know where where uh, my office is at is is in Avenel, so it's right there. Okay. Right behind the prison. Question I have for you is uh, as as an artist, like like your name ain't no regular name, like it's yeah. not no typical hip hop name. Right. Young Zanny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, because you took on such a thought provoking name, it, it's it's either one of two things, in my opinion. Okay. Either either you just know that you're only gonna go but so far with your music, or you feel that you're gonna be the one that's gonna, you know, every once in a while you do get an artist that's 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 deep you know, deep thinking that does like, you know, blow up, you know, IE common, you know what I'm saying? Which one would you say you fall into or, or are you aspiring to be? I'm aspiring to take this as far as I can take it. Um, I would consider myself not just a rap artist. Um, I do pop, I do hip hop. Like I'm, I'm a very versatile artist, respectfully, you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, I want to take this as far as I can take it. Like, I don't, I don't want to put a, I don't want to put any type of limit on myself. Like, and I mean, I'm independent. Technically. So it's up for grabs, honestly. I, I love, I love challenging myself. And the reason why my name is my name is, um, you ever heard of purple cow theory? Okay, well, all right. So let's say that you and I start in Edison right and we taking a road trip we taking a road trip to cali we going we going right to la but we since we driving cross country we gonna see a whole bunch of fields whole bunch of pastures all of that right and let's say in the middle of one of these fields let's say in kansas or whatever the case may be just whatever state we see a purple cow now that that cow has no more or less significance than any other cow. The only difference is that that cow is purple. When we get to LA, one of us is going to turn to the other one like, yo, you remember we saw that purple cow? Facts. That's why my name is my name. You're going to pay attention to it. Here, you're going to pay attention. I'm not, I don't, I'm not the flashiest dresser. I'm not the flashy, you know what I mean? I'm not, but it's something that you're going to pay attention to. Yeah, yeah, because because my question is, you know, because I used to, you know, when I when I rapped, I used to be one of those that, you know, rappers that uh, go went into deep topics and you know conspiracy theories and all that. Mm -hmm. And people don't generally, you know, it, it's like it, it, it's crazy because people don't really want to hear stuff. They want to grab it. Go for thought is, you know, you're gonna grab a lot of attention from people that, you know, like us that, mm -hmm. you know, like thoughtful things a lot of people are gonna hear flow for thought and be like oh man well what's that what's that line that jay-z said the nines what you trying to kick knowledge what you trying to kick knowledge like you know what i'm saying so it's kind of brave really you know for for you as an independent artist to take on that name and to really you know do that mm. you know what i'm saying and uh you know is that is that something that um that you ready for are you ready for I people to to automatically be like, oh, I'm not gonna give him a chance because he's too thoughtful. So he look, he, he likes some kicking knowledge, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, yes and no, because you're never gonna be 100% ready for it, but I, am, I still embrace it with open arms because, again, this is where the versatility comes in. Sometimes it's not, it's not always about what you're saying, it's how you say it. You get what I'm saying? And I feel, I'm confident in myself as an artist to where my I can switch my delivery up and present it to where you're you're nodding your head or my or bopping just because you're, you're like you know just because of the flow itself and you're like oh all right but then when you actually tap into it you have like hey what's he saying okay cool there's layers behind what I'm doing yeah there's layers behind what I'm doing so am I am I ever gonna be hundred percent ready for people to categorize me no but Everybody gets categorized. We don't want it to happen, but people already make assumptions. Yeah, I feel that. Cause, you know, like, give you a perfect example, Dead Prez, you know, they're very thoughtful artists. And really, they put on a hell of a show. A live show, they do. Dead Prez, Common, puts on a hell of a show. Most Def 
hell of a show. As a, you know, an artist that's probably gonna deal with the thing of, you know, quote unquote conscious woke rap, you know, you you have uh, precedences that um, of artists that that were put into that lane, but still managed to shine and do their thing. You know, let, let's bring it back to Jersey, man. Shout out to Jersey. Shout out to Jersey. Shout out to East Coast hip hop. I don't care what nobody says. I feel like we're the best, and that's just how I feel about it. But we'll, we'll, we'll get into the state of East Coast music in a minute. But let's talk Jersey for a minute. How do you feel being a Jersey artist? I hate to say, but what is the problem with Jersey music? Because it seems like not only do we have to fight for respect with, I guess, New York or whatever, but just as a general sound, since Red Man, I mean, give or take a single here and there, you know, Fetty Wap, but it's like Jersey has to not only climb a, a hill of just amongst our own area, just mm-hmm. getting the respect we deserve. What? How do you feel being a Jersey artist? Do you feel there's a pressure being a Jersey artist? Do you do you even consider yourself a Jersey artist? Are you just an artist? How do you feel about the situation? Well, I already know. Like, I'm not. I'm not saying I'm a 100% put Jersey on my back, but at the same time, like, of course, I'm going to represent where I'm from. Um, my problem. I don't even want to call it a problem. Um, the thing that I've noticed is that Jersey doesn't really support Jersey. That, like, that Jersey really doesn't support Jersey. We're quick to jump, like, and I get it. We're, like, you have Philly on one side, you have New York on another side, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I, I get it, but at the same time, we can't make our own lane or bring our lane back. We can't bring our own lane back until we support each other. Honestly, you said it yourself. How many acts have we had out consistently in the last 15, 20 years? Yeah, Pro- you probably name them on on one, on one hand. You know what I'm saying? The relevant. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm proud of being a Jersey artist. I feel like we need to be represented more in the culture. I feel like East Coast rap needs to be represented more. I don't know what happened, but it, we gonna talk yeah. about that. <laughs> yeah, that that kind of leads into my next question. It seems like now, mind you, I, I'm man, I love '90s hip hop. I feel like there ain't nothing messing with '90s hip hop. Come on. A little 2000s here and there, a little late 80s, but 90s to me was the shit. And I feel like then the East Coast, not only were we running hip hop, but we were setting trends. We were setting the slang, everything. You saw the influence and the impact that the East Coast had on music back then. But now jump to 2022, way, way before, way before that. East Coast has not uh, only been not as relevant, but in many ways has been following the trends. Look at it now. Uh, a lot of people, when you when you ask somebody who's not from uh, East Coast what type of music we make, they're quick to say drill music or whatever than they are to say any other form of music. What? It's like, it seems like we've lost our identity. We're following trends. Everybody's capping now. No longer do we determine the slang or determine the trends, you know? it's. It's either Atlanta or wherever, you know, everyone's but here. What happened to the East Coast? And first of all, do you do you see it as a problem? Are you just doing you? Like, like what, what do you feel like is the problem with East Coast music in general? And what, what is your plan to kind of, as you're making your music, to either address it or just deal with it? I mean, I'm going to tap into it. I'm going to address it a little bit, honestly. Not... I don't. I can't say that I necessarily have a problem, but I feel like the way, not not even just social media, the way the way music has been set up, everybody's had their turn at it. Everybody's had their turn at it. I mean, in, in some way, shape, or form. When the South became more integrated into hip hop, I personally feel like it was more so both the East and West Coast being more accepting of the South, mm-hmm. and then they that they had their wave was an explosion, so to speak, um, and now. Yeah, you got drill coming into it, the Midwest, and then obviously from overseas. But um, what my plan is, not to bring Boom Bat back directly, but there will be a lot of references towards it. There will be. And even in Soul Food and I can you could count. I can't say you could count them, but if you're a music head, you you definitely can pick out the references. I always make some type of reference in the track that, that, that relates to that era. 
do I feel like I can spearhead the movement to bring East Coast rap back? I may not be able to spearhead it directly, but I definitely would love to play a huge part in it. So, <laughs> okay, yeah, no doubt. All right, so let's say hypothetically speaking, right? Let let's say the day has arrived, the label gives you a blank check. They're like, listen, get any producers you want. We will pay for all the beats. Don't even worry about it. So if you had your choice of producers to work with on whatever whatever album is coming up, who would some of the producers be that you would choose to be on your project? Oh, man. That's, that's well, no, I'm not even going to say it because I'm sorry. I'm going to say it. I would love Timbaland to produce the track. Like, I, I, mm. I, I would love that. I would love that. Why not? It, oh, oh, man. That, just, just if... Uh, if my ideal situation, mm -hmm. right, like for one track, not a whole project, for one track, it would have Tim, it would have Missy Elliott because I'm sorry, she's a mm. goat, the goat, she's a, and it would reference Aaliyah, and I'd be perfectly fine with that. Okay, I'll be perfectly fine with that. But it, because I feel like if you're gonna do anything in in regards to Aaliyah, mm -hmm. you gotta have Missy and Tim because it's not it's not a it's not a track. <laughs> yeah. That's a dynamic duo right there. Mm -hmm. All right. But, Anybody else? I mean, listen, we talking Primo, we talking Swiss. Any anybody else other than them? Metro Boomin. Just man, yeah. I was, everybody that you said, I'm I'm so I'm so open to to like the opportunity just in general. Mm -hmm. But yeah, for Primo, Metro, like uh, 40. I mean, I know Drake got him, but like I would do yeah. like, something it, I don't know. Like his beats are crazy to me. Like I even J. Cole's production, when he makes a beat, is mm. fire to me. And J. Cole's one of my favorite modern artists. Mm. Obviously, I have a huge appreciation for Nas. But I mean, if there's anybody that could not emulate it, because you're not going to emulate Nas. You're not. Yeah. You're not going to do it. J. Cole is right there. He, yeah. he He's such an inspirational artist to me, personally. Uh, uh, mm. uh. So... Besides J. Cole, who are some of your current favorite artists out? Oh, again, going into going into versatility. Like this is where the versatility comes out for me personally. Mm -hmm. Um obviously I'm gonna give Drake his flowers. I'm gonna give Kendrick his flowers. A lot of people they uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm gonna give them their flowers. Ty Dallas sign, the weekend. I and mean, we talking about mm -hmm. recent artists, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, okay. Ty Dolla sign, huge fan of him. Um pun of course. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give Joey flowers. He like I'm gonna give I'm gonna give Joey flowers. Um, mm. I'm gonna give the R&B singer. I, both the R&B singer and Fat Joe. I'm gonna give them both they flowers. <laughs> I'm gonna give them, I'm gonna give them both they flowers. Um, yeah. Rock him because he mm. made it. Like, Rock him made it cool to me to have a smooth delivery and not have to curse that much. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I get I get millionaires flowers too. Although like yo. You know, he's not talked about as often as he was in the early 2000s, but he was another one that didn't have the curse to make his point. Mm. That I like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I like stuff like that because it's like, I like writing without cursing, although I do curse from time to time, being truthful about it. Like, it challenges, it challenges your pen more. It challenges your creativity rather than just, you know, cursing to make a point. Yeah. Obviously, I mean, Jay, he's a goat. Um, Nas is a goat. Pac is a goat. <laughs> yeah. So you, you're well, you're well versed in the game, not only of hip hop but R and B as well. Of course, I mean, because I, I look at it like this: if I'm going to be a performing artist, right? I don't, I'm not the most knowledgeable, like I like in the sense of okay, yeah, I can give you lyrics here and there, but it's an overall vibe or song, and I. My problem is song titles. That's my largest problem. I really? give you lyrics fast and I give you song titles. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I feel like if I'm going to dive into the world of music, I'm gonna have to not only pay homage, but you know, understand what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so yo, you got the fire single Toxic. This uh, is this gonna be on an upcoming album? Tell us about the album or whatever project you're working on that Toxic is the single off of. Toxic was originally just going to be a single. Okay. It was originally just going to be a single. I'm like, okay, cool. But 
talking with my team, talking with my engineer. Um, Toxic is probably going to be a part of a larger project. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm in a toss up between two different names right now, and you know when when this when this airs, you know you guys could drop it in the comments or whatever, whatever one you feel I should go with. I'll, I may or may not have a decision by then. Who knows? Okay. We're going with either Flex Appeal or Artifacts, but it's spelled Art of Facts. So, mm. well, I gotta say, being a Jersey hip hop fan, I feel like Artifacts is first of all the, the play on words is dope and. You know, anybody who's a Jersey hip hop fan knows about the artifacts. So I don't know. My my vote might be for that person. The album art behind that, I may, I may, I may leak it. I may not. But I can still describe it though, because it's a dope concept. Okay. So you know what a staircase bait is, right? Staircase bait, you said? No, nah, fade, fade, fade. So let's say you have a fade, and let's say you have a fade and you literally have like Step, step, step. It's almost like a juice box fade, but you got it and you oh, got later. Okay, all right, all right, all right. So you have that, but I, we took that and we put it on a we put it on a Greek statue of Zeus. Hmm. And the reason why the reason why that idea came about is because it was like, you know what? It's so easy to see one culture take traces from another one. Mm-hmm. What would be not necessarily controversial, but what would be more eye-catching than taking something that everybody can easily recognize or some type of, you know, some type of artist and mm-hmm. putting hip-hop culture in it and saying, boom. But that's the artifacts. So, like, you know what I mean? Like, we... Yeah. It's- <laughs> Just like how back in the days they used to take other people's artifacts and put they they face or they head on it or right take off right. take off a nose here and there shout out to the sphinx you know what i mean you know yeah yeah i think that's actually a pretty dope idea yo it's about that time let everybody know where they can reach you at online social media and all that good stuff all right well everybody can reach me at flow for thought as at sign f-l-o-w the number four t-h-o-u-g-h-c i mean that's instagram that's twitter Facebook, like, you know, well, I don't really be on Facebook like that. So <laughs> Instagram or Twitter, you catch me on there. Um, okay. Y'all check all the music out on all streaming platforms. I mean, just find me, Flow for Thought. You can look mm-hmm. up Soul Food Eye Candy. You can look up Toxic, obviously. And my personal favorite, because that's my baby right now, they just, y'all just made reference of it, is Party. That one's about to go crazy this summer. I promise you, mark my words, it's about to go crazy. Hmm. <laughs> Yo, definitely, man. Yo, shout out to everybody tuning in right now. Make sure you tap in. Check him out on all social media platforms. And uh, when the music is finally out, that project is out, do you plan to have it on all uh, streaming platforms? Of course, of course, of course. Everything I'm doing, well, I may drop a little freestyle here and there, you know what I mean? But outside of that, yeah, all my music is going up on all streaming platforms, absolutely. Mm. How about physical copies? I know we're in 2022. Everything is digital and all that, but... Is there a chance you might release some CDs, some vinyl, or are you keeping it digital? Um, honestly, per request, we get some get some um something going drop shipping. That's fine. We can do that. <laughs> All right. That's what's up, man. Well, yeah, we appreciate having you on the show. We look forward to the project. When you get that video, make sure the first or the second people you send it to recap with the good fella show, because we are looking forward to that. Yo, the single's dope. Your previous catalog is dope, and we look forward to the upcoming album. I genuinely appreciate you guys having me. No, I really do. Yeah, so we look forward to all that new music. Shout out to everybody tuned in right now. Flow for Thought in the building. Check him out. So on behalf of the good fellas, shout out to the homie Nucci Rayo. Shout out to everybody tuned in. Man, like I said, once again, man, anytime, anytime you got new music, come through. We got you. I genuinely appreciate that. I will do. I'm definitely tapping.